Hello, and welcome to downtown. I'm your host, Robbie Haig, back again, and back again with Stephen Nixaris. Yes. And very happy to have you, Stephen. We said we would do this, and lo and behold, we followed through. Yes, and thank you, Robbie. I loved uh, our last meeting, you. and I look forward to doing it again. And of course, Stephen is our state representative. I hope you all out there know that. And we are going to add to many of the things we talked about before. Perfect. We, we knew we were... We had more to say after we yes. finished, so here we are. Now, what have you been doing? You have added the New England Wildlife Center. Tell me about that. What are, what, what are, what's happening with that? Oh, fascinating. Um, I try to go to as many places as I can. I call it boots on the ground. So whatever is out in the district, which I cover, you know, Barnstable, Sandwich, born and even some of Plymouth. Whatever's out there, I try to see myself and, and help, you know. And so I heard about this New England Wildlife Center, which is in Barnstable on Route 6A. And I was just uh, blown away when I, when I got there. Um, we love animals, you know, I have five of my own. They're all rescued and uh, this, this place that you can't see from the road, it's set way back. It's called the Birdsey Wildlife Center. There's another one in Weymouth. Mm -hmm. And there's just all these critters there that are injured. So yes. I got to meet uh, owls and hawks and turtles and, and see how every day, seven days a week, there's people there caring for our wildlife. And I loved it. And the key to that is wildlife. Yes. They don't take care of pets. It's wildlife. Yes, right. Good point. So yeah. everybody, you know, pets, uh, veterinary and all that. But right. what about that turtle or that bird? Yeah. So that's one of the places that people should know. Uh, they should call their animal control officer if they find some type of wildlife. Uh, that uh, they'll probably come and help. But uh, if not, or that it's a weekend and it's not around, then you can uh, call the Wildlife Center. There's somebody there, they'll guide you. And then you could actually bring that animal or that wildlife uh, critter to this beautiful place in the middle of the woods that you would wow. not know is there. There's veterinarians, there's you know, uh, animal technicians. There's also students learning Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing we talked about when we were there, um, I would love to see is uh, perhaps tying in veteran care, you know, veterans uh, and uh, the love of animals. So right. a veteran could come in and care for the animals and help each other. And also another idea is our uh, inmates that are in uh, prison uh, recovering, hopefully, from whatever they've done. Uh, there's a program that they do in Weymouth yeah. where they bring the uh, incarcerated inmates to help the animals and they end up when they leave with jobs. Absolutely wonderful. Mind-boggling. Yes. And of course you know they do that with the inmates in, in uh, Plymouth where mm -hmm. they tend the gardens and there's so much that can be done. There so is much more humane. Yes work. And that's what it should be about, that, you know, we are, um, I believe in service before self and, uh, you know, people over politics. Yes, I'm a state representative, but I love it. I'm grateful. Yeah. But uh, it's really should be about service yes. and, and not only with people, but animals. So tell me what is, what do you do for veterans at the wildlife facility? Well, at the wildlife facility, we're working on setting up a program because we know, you know, unfortunately, 22 veterans take their own life every day. So in America, the greatest nation on earth, uh, all these men and women that make it home, um, they struggle. And the, the rate is 22 a day today. In America, wow. 22 veterans will take their life. 
So we try to do what we can to stop that. And uh, there's all kinds of therapy and, you know, the VA mm -hmm. and everything. But sometimes it can be the love of an animal. Yes. Or riding a motorcycle, like kind of the things we talked about. And, yes. and with myself, uh, I'm the son of a veteran. I'm the grandson of a veteran and a dad of one that was killed in combat in Afghanistan. We dedicate our lives to helping veterans. So hopefully someday we can have them work with animals. Um, but right now, yeah, the way we help veterans is, uh, you know, helping them with food or clothes. Uh, any way to show our love and respect for the sacrifices they've made right. and to build them up if they need it so they don't choose to take their life. And mentioning coats, you give coats to veterans who need them. We do. I just got done. And, uh, uh, yeah, on this cold day. Yeah, it was cold. Uh, it was cold. So every other Tuesday, every, we've done it every Tuesday for almost two years. But now it's every other Tuesday at the old Sandwich Police Station on Route 6A, outside, okay. for almost two years. A bunch of volunteers, including me, we show up and there's a container out back. It's filled with cases of food. It can, it's also pet food. Uh, it's all, all food that we've gotten oh, from the base. Everything is related. It is. It? So we yes. give out pet food, uh, you know, food for people. And today uh, and, and in the future, in the winter, we have coats, brand new winter coats. Wow. Thanks to Ocean State Job Law. It's a program where citizens like you or me and probably some of our people that are watching, uh, it's a program, you go to Ocean State Job Lot, you buy a winter coat for $40, they keep the coat, they give you $40 back in, wow. uh, in Ocean State Job Lot coupons, and those coats end up in the warehouse, and now people like us give them out to veterans and it doesn't have to be that they're homeless, you know, homeless number one, right. but any veteran as a thank you and any military active duty, because there's a lot of people serving our country today. Right. They're not veterans, they're still serving and we want to help them too. So we have these winter coats, we have food, and anyone that needs one really just reach out to me and we'll make it happen. Wonderful. And they certainly look very warm. They're beautiful. Like I was wearing one earlier well today. Well done. <laughs> uh, but it's the people in the community that bought them from Ocean State Job Lot and got their money back, let's say, and then they end up with us. So uh, part of my life is connected to so many different things, and it's wonderful in a way. Yes. Um, I'm not really a business person. But I understand service and, and making connections to help people. And it does take a community. It sure does. And you know what's important, uh, Robbie? We, we need to realize that there's way more good than bad. Oh, yes. And sometimes with the way um, the, you know, things are portrayed in the media or you know, in the middle of this COVID pandemic, we can get like down or we can get um, adversarial. Politically, we shouldn't. We, we should, we're Americans, you know, we should be proud of our country and, and really try to help each other the best we can and listen to each other. Listen, you know, uh, and uh, you can disagree, like I, I do that Absolutely. a lot There's in the State House, but we do it diplomatically and work Disagreeing together. is how we learn also. Amen. So yeah. I've learned a lot and I love it. In fact, today, I went, uh, you know, when we did our coat program today, Senator Susan Moran was there. So Senator Moran and I, uh, colleagues in the State House, and here we are handing out coats. Isn't and food. that wonderful? It is, as it should be. Yes. Agreed. And you're also um, doing something with the Born Food Pantry. Yes. Oh, yes. People should know about that too. Yes. There's plenty of food in the community. Uh, I've learned it. Uh, it's just getting it to the people. So uh, we get our food for the military foundation that I volunteer for from, you know, Boston and pallets and trucks, and it's a lot of work to get it to the Cape. Uh, then there's the sandwich food pantry. There's the Bourne food pantry. And people should know that they're there. So in Bourne, 
they have plenty of food at the pantry, fresh food, but a lot of people don't know about it. So uh, I try to bring food every Monday uh, to the food pantry in Bourne because they give it out on Tuesdays. So only on Tuesday. There's a bunch of volunteers, just like you know we do with coats. There's the same kind of great people from the Bourne area. They're in this building, and every Tuesday they're there, and they collect the food. They bag it, put it in carts. People drive up, and they hand it out. So and the food you know. comes from different uh, yes. entities yes. on the Cape. Yes, and 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 the you know Boston Food Pantry. There's so Very many good. connections. So many people working together. There is, to and make it happen. we need to make people know about it. Of course. Don't ever go hungry ever, and if it's. And don't feel shy about, geez, right. I, I, you know, no, if you, we want to help. Right. So the Friends of the Bourne Food Pantry, they have a great uh, uh, building in Bourne. And every Tuesday morning, they're handing out food. And I was just there, and they have plenty. So the more, the better. So Excellent. please check them out on their website or Facebook page. Very good. Okay, I'm going to switch gears just a little bit. There has been a fentanyl exposure at the Falmouth Hospital. Can you talk to us about that and yes. what has happened, where it's going? Yeah, that's, that's, anything you we're can. lucky it wasn't worse. Um, my fiance Denise is a nurse practitioner. She works uh, at Falmouth Hospital. And I was just with Senator Moran, and we were talking about that. Um, fentanyl kills people, so uh, that's, a, I have a lot of issues that we're trying to push in, you know, in, in government uh, as a legislator and as a lawmaker. One of them is fentanyl. We, we need to do better. 100,000 people died in America last year, 100,000 due to overdoses. Wow. Now it was heroin, and now mostly it's fentanyl. It's this illegal drug, it's very powerful. They put it, they mix it in with heroin, and, uh, you know, people probably out there, you know, have family members that struggle with addiction, and um, they're dying. And I, I want to do a better job on that, so, you know, more detox centers, more recovery centers. Uh, but what happened in Falmouth Hospital is another example of how, how this illegal, dangerous drug can ruin a community. Uh, someone had it, they overdosed, uh, they lived, thank God, but when they went to take whatever that was away from that person, they didn't know what it was, it released. And there were um, first responders out, out on the floor of the ER. And they called the code and the rescuers came and, and saved them. Like, so we're fortunate that nobody died, but it closed down the ER, which meant uh, anyone in need had to go somewhere else. I, and, uh, but, so thank God um, people are okay, but the issue of fentanyl is one of my targets. I work with a parents group. Um, they have all lost a child. Wow. Like I have, and um, we can do better. So we need more help but I think also we need to be tougher on the people, the criminals that are distributing this drug. We have to get tougher on them. And they need to know if they're distributing this dangerous, illegal poison, that right. their punishment is certain and swift. And that will help, I think, um, prevent more problems. If you have recovery centers, if you have detox, nobody has to wait. They can go right in and get help. But also, people that are breaking the law, distributing it, need to know that there's consequences. Mm -hmm. Would you please, for me, be a little more explicit about what happened at Falmouth Hospital? From, yes. What happened, what happened with the fentanyl exposure? How did that come to be? And, 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 uh, yeah, from, you know, Falmouth Hospital's not in my district, but from what right. I understand, okay. um, the person that had it overdosed right. was brought to the ER, and when they were taking the person's property, it released. Uh, fentanyl, um, when it gets in the it's air. It's a powder. Yes. 
uh, when it That's gets in the That's what I want people yeah, to hear. Yeah, it's very dangerous. That it is a powder. Yes, and it, and, it, and it, it's chemical it's in the air. And it, when you take that in, you will uh, pass out. And Narcan is a, uh, another drug that first responders have. We administer Narcan by spraying it in someone's nostril. Mm -hmm. That revives you. So at Falmouth Hospital, it was a, um, a hazmat situation wow. that could have taken lives. And I don't have all the facts, but I know that. But that's that's what we need, yes. is how it happened, yes. and that it can easily happen it, anywhere. It can, and, and uh, thank God the, you know, our first responders, police, fire, doctors, nurses, hospital workers, they've gone through a lot in the last two years with yes. this crisis, and it's not ending. And that's why so many are relinquishing their jobs. So it gets worse. Another story. Yes, we can talk about that too, yes. right? Yes. yes, that's part of my life too. Yes. yes. So there's just, there's just so many different ways that we can all work hand in hand to try to make life happier and more comfortable and loving and all of the good things that go along with that. I agree. I yeah. like to look at the glass half full. You know, that's my personality, mm -hmm. I guess, and mm -hmm. I believe in that. And that's why we talked about earlier, this country is great. Uh, but we are struggling, and uh, yes. the way to fix it is to, to be more united right. and, and realize you know, life is about others, not, not always yourself, others before self, service before self. Listen, help when you can, right. give out a coat, give out food, right. and, and we have more common ground than we realize. We all have kids, you know, we all have uh, families, and, and, and uh, in my world of politics, Democrat, Republican, Independent, you know, look for the common ground and let's help people. And we do. Yes. And let's continue it and, and look at let's the good. let people out there know that we are doing the best we can with what we have. Yes. And, and keep going. I always say happy, yes. healthy, and great new year. Like, let's, let's go. We can do this. And we can get through Absolutely. this crisis. And the more we talk about it, the more it happens. Yes. Just getting the word out there and letting people know that we are positive. Yes. And we'll uh, just make everyone else that much more Yeah, and, and give them a way to help. Like yes. the today, when we did the coats, there were 20 people. You know, they're helping. Wow. It's good to help others. Yes. So they're looking for something. Hey, feed somebody, clothe somebody, you know. And they'll pay it forward. Yes. Yeah. And a lot of it goes on, and it's good that we talk about it so everybody out there knows Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Know what is happening. Yes. And God bless Ocean State Job Lot. Yeah, that's an amazing program. I think it's been for five years. But a lot wow. of people don't realize the coats end up really at, um, in Foxborough at Gillette Stadium. Really? We have a, we have a warehouse there. Okay. And now we, ha and we have the one on Joint Base Cape Cod. Wow. And this is an ongoing procedure. Yes. And our goal uh, is to the old Sandwich Police Station, Mass Military Support Foundation, uh, leased it from the town. It's the building's in rough shape. But uh, Home Depot is donating $38,000 worth of roof roofing, windows, and doors so we can rehab that building. Wow. And that'll be a place where military and veterans can go and get food and clothes. And the advantage of that is uh, it's, it's easy access. Because right. right now, everything is on the base, and not everybody can get on the base. Even veterans are not allowed on the base. Uh, oh. So uh, okay. we need something out in the community where everybody can get to. And okay. that's going to happen at the old Sandwich Police Station, hopefully within a year. Excellent. And here you are, another part of the community, working with the community. Amen. That's the way wow. it should be. Wow. So, and you said that uh, Senator Susan Moran was there also today. Yes. And that is, it's, it's just wonderful that, uh, you know, with the coats for the vets and the yes. food. And um, it's a great example of our Cape Cod elected officials working hand in hand. And may it continue. 
It will, and I guess uh, I don't, you know, it's new to me, politics. I'm in my first year. Uh, but they say the Cape Cod delegation really stands out. And, and Plymouth Excellent. is great too. I have part of Plymouth, Matt Maratori, Kathy Lenatro. Um, it's, it's great how we all work together. It's very important uh, to work together for the common cause. Sometimes Democrats and Republicans see things different. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, that's the, the two-party system. But the bottom line is try to help somebody work together. And Senator Wren, not only today did we do the coats, but I took her afterwards to uh, one of our places in Sandwich, the La Adoro Italian gr uh, Market, right downtown Sandwich. They're collecting, not only are they a food place, but they collect diapers. We call it diapers for the district. So Senator mm -hmm. Moran and I went over there, donated diapers, and those diapers will end up for military families on the base. Wow. So if anybody has the time or some money, if you could buy some diapers, it's $40 a, a case, Isn't drop it off amazing? at Lodoro, yep. and it'll end up with veterans and military families. Fantastic. Okay, I also would like to talk to you about Lights for Democracy. Okay, the candlelight vigil that was held in, in Sandwich yes. and across the nation on January 6th yes. of this year. Yes. And um, of course, commemorating the attack on the nation's capital. Yes. What, what, what can you talk to? Tell us something wonderful about this. That's a great the question. Because for me, that was quite a day in my life. Um, I don't remember if we talked about this before, but January 6th, for me, was the day I got sworn in in Boston. So here I am, a rookie representative from, from Sandwich and, and Cape Cod, and I'm in the People's House in Boston uh, with Representative Diggs. Only because of COVID, only the 17 new people were allowed. So normally it's 200 officials, family, friends. It's a special day. You're sworn in to uphold the Constitution, you know, beautiful. Um, but on that day, it was only 17 rookies. So Kip Diggs and I are sitting in the people's house with our masks on, and we're sworn in, and it was wonderful. I was so proud to be part of uh, democracy, really, and left at around 4.30 of being inside all day, walked down those beautiful steps at the people's house, and that's where a reporter asked me, you know, how the day went. I said, great, it was so special, democracy, and to be in the people's house. And she said, well, what do you think about Washington? And I, I said, what do you mean? And she said, the attack that's going on, I had no idea. So that's how I first heard about it, and I drove home and came to back to Cape Cod and turned on the news, and I saw, you know, police officers being attacked in our nation's capital, where I have been. I visited there, I brought my family there. Yeah. And um, so to be in Sandwich a year later with my constituents, right, they're all, lot, most of them were Sandwich residents. Um, quietly, um, I guess, honoring a special day in America. I, I thought that was special to be invited. They asked yeah. me to come and, uh, you know, the, it. It wasn't holding signs or really anything political. It was really, I think, a way to reflect on how precious our freedom and democracy is. And uh, so for me, January 6th will always be a complete, uh, I guess, uh, bittersweet day. Proud to be sworn in in the People's House in Boston, yes. where American freedom was born. Right. And at the same time, the day that uh, our nation's capital was uh, under attack. Wow. It was a, it's a powerful day for me, and it always sure will be. Were. Who organized this? There was a woman named um, uh, Marjorie, I believe. She's a wonderful person, and uh, just some sandwich people that, that uh, asked me to come, and they organized it, and they it was very quiet. It was just people holding candles and, uh, wow. and without really saying a word, trying to, I think, uh, again, s remember quite a day, 
on the one year anniversary. Right. Yeah, and um, you know, I was grateful to to be there. Wonderful. And it's as you say, this building in Washington D.C. is ours also. Well, I call uh, you know uh, the People's House in Boston is the Correct. People's House, and the Capitol is and as the well. The Capitol also. And, and for me, you know, not only did I when I watched TV and saw the news late that night, not when it was you know during the day, but um, it I mean, when I saw the police officers being under attack. You know, I mm -hmm. forty years of a police uh, police right. officer. My it, son it is a police been officer. Harmed. It, I couldn't believe that in America that that was happening. Um, right. So I didn't really look at it politically. I looked at it as uh, it's just wrong to do something like that. We should never use violence. Right. Um, and but uh, you know we all have the right to protest, but it has to be peacefully. And uh, when you attack police um, in our nation's capital, the people's house, yeah, let's hope that never happens ever again. No one expected it to happen this one time. And as they say, it, the building in Washington, D.C. belongs to all of us. Doesn't matter who we are, Republican, Independent, Democratic, it doesn't matter. It belongs to all of us. And, and one group should not ever be permitted to take it over as theirs. No one should, yeah. It's no a, um, and everybody should go, you know, when yes. things go back to normal. I want people to come to Boston and visit. I'll Absolutely. give them a tour. And in, if you can go to Washington, one things are back open. You should, I meet, a, I meet a lot of adults that have never been to the State House. And we want to show, you know, where freedom began and, and yes. how government works. Yes. And I have been to both places, and I have been very proud to be in both places. Yes. I actually spoke at the State House many years ago, and that's another story. Yeah. Well, we'll have but to tell that sometime. It's being proud. That's how I felt when I was there that morning, being sworn in. Like, I felt yes. so honored and proud. Yes. And, and it's you're so looking personal. at flags and yeah, paintings really. from, you know, from the day one of America, like it's really special and everybody should see it and be proud. Yes. And that's where we do our business and uh, let's hope we can get back open and, and, and really celebrate um, being Americans. Absolutely. Okay, we also, since we're doing updates, we need an update on your work on qualified immunity. Yes. Okay. We just got done, yeah, I was okay. honored to be on that. So um, for the past year, I was one of the commissioners. I'm on four committees, uh, public safety, um, federal affairs, uh, elder affairs, uh, state rules, wow. all kinds of committees. But this was a special commission uh, where the governor and others put people on it. So we met every month uh, with the goal of looking at qualified immunity in policing. Okay. And uh, yeah, so a lot of people don't understand what it really is. And that's what I was hoping you'd tell yeah, us. Yeah, and it's, uh, you know, I was a police officer for 40 years. Right. And, and what it really is, it's, it's, it's qualified immunity. So if a police officer or a firefighter or a nurse, anyone in public service um, does something as part of their job and now they're sued or accused of doing something wrong, uh, there is a thing called qualified immunity, that if what you did wasn't against the law, it was kind of, uh, you, you did the best you could in that situation, a judge, a judge, not just anyone, determines, okay, I understand that, then I'm gonna give you qualified immunity. It's about being sued, basically, uh, for decisions that we make every day, 24 hours a day, seven wow. days a week. So in Massachusetts and every other state, there is a thing called qualified immunity that helps first responders have some protection against, uh, you could say, frivolous lawsuits. Uh, so the state wanted us to look at it. It didn't, this commission was only looking at policing, 
Okay. And um, it comes from uh, two years ago, there was police reform in Massachusetts, which I wasn't part of, but they did a great job. They're improving the training, they're you know, building buildings so police officers can train. Because I believe police officers should be held accountable for what they do, but yes. they need to be given the tools and the training to be successful. It's a very tough job. I'm very proud of our officers uh, all over the state. Uh, that's in my blood. So qualified immunity, we just got done. Uh, the committee voted to let it sit the way it is, don't touch it, leave it alone, and let's let police reform that just started, let's let that work for the next two years for training and see how things go. We're very fortunate in Massachusetts. Our police officers do a great job. Yes. And uh, we want them to be protected uh, when they do their job right. And that's kind of what that is. And I was proud yes. to be on that, and that was Excellent. part of the recommendation. Wonderful. We also have another date that we need to bring up that's coming up on February 12th. Oh, yes. And that's very soon. Yes. That's yeah. almost here. Yeah. So talk to me about yeah, that. Yeah, that's part of my Near life. Near and dear to your heart. Yeah, that's my son, Nick. Um, Nick was uh, my son, is my son. He was killed in combat in Afghanistan. I wear him on my sleeve. I have a, a tattoo of his picture. Wow. And this is his bracelet, along with wow. Michael Chesna and Sergeant Cannon. Oh. And um, on February 12th, that he would be 34 this year. He was killed at age 21, fighting for our freedom. But we always do a blood drive. Uh, so uh, this will be the 12th year. Wow. So we encourage people out there, if you can, to give the gift of life. You know, blood is so important. No one can make it. And right. if you donate at the Nick Blood Drive, we are we we all our blood goes to Cape Cod Healthcare. Okay. So it's used only at Cape Cod Hospital in Hyannis or Falmouth Hospital. So the blood you donate at you know Nick's Blood Drive or right. any Cape Cod Healthcare Blood Drive stays on Cape Cod to Fantastic. help Cape Cod. And that's important. Every pint can save up to three lives. So uh, our event is so big, we do it for three days. So it's Friday, February 11th, Saturday, February 12th, and Sunday, February 13th. Excellent. Uh, in uh, Yarmouth, and um, if you can, please donate blood, give the gift of life. Um, and it's, uh, you know, for us, uh, Nick was wounded in combat by an explosion, and, um, and they, uh, they did the best they could to save his life, and they gave every pint of blood that they had. Um, in Afghanistan, 130 degrees, they couldn't store that much. It was in a tent, and um, when they ran out, the, the Marines and the sailors took it out of their arms and put it wow. right in, and then when they ran out, uh, Nick died. And uh, Nick was born at Cape Cod Hospital, so uh, it means a lot to, for us to try to save lives in Nick's memory. And they're doing everything they can to perpetuate Nick. And Nick Cape and Cod. all those that serve our country. Absolutely. Yeah. But Nick Absolutely. was a Cape Cod. He's a son of but Cape Cod. But you've worked for this, and that's yes. exceptional. And, and they, do they have a wing? They have, uh, yeah. You? Um, the Blood Donor Center. Not every hospital has a blood bank. We're very lucky that Cape yes. Cod Hospital does. So blood is stored there and it's processed there. And there's a donor center, so not only are there blood drives all over the Cape and people should go and when they can, but every day, every day you can go to Cape Cod Hospital in Hyannis and donate blood in the Nicholas G. Exaros Blood Donor Center, named after Nicholas. Um, Excellent. Who was born and raised on Cape Cod. And, um, and at this point in time especially, not that blood is not important all the time. Blood is down so it dramatically. Is. Yes, yes. There just is, they say there's not enough for a week. That's correct. And uh, it takes one tragedy to drain it all out, right? So that incident right. we talked about earlier in Falmouth, if yes. there had been a need for blood, 
you could have used all the blood up and now we need more. So right. it's always, always needed to make donations, store it properly, and use it for Cape Cod as that needed. Well, sir, I thank you very, very much for being back here and keeping us updated on what we all need to know. And we'll do it again. Yes, I enjoy it. And we'll it. keep on doing it until we're exhausted of information. <laughs> There's always that something. That will never happen. Yeah, so <laughs> as, as much as we can, let's keep doing it. It's important yes. to be transparent and try to let everybody out there know, I, I say, the good that's going on yes. um, we now need, more than ever. We need to let people know about the good because they all know about that other stuff. Yes. <laughs> and we thank you out there for being part of us and being part of downtown. Thank you for being with us today. And those of you out there at Channel 13 and 14, we need you. And on the live stream at www.sandwichtv.org. Thank you again. And we'll see you real soon. Amen. Thank you. God bless. <laughs>